we're back with this again. Okay. Let's try that again. God is good. And all the time. Amen. Well, we sure have heard a lot about missions this morning. And uh, some people think, well, <clears throat> you guys are just a missions church. That's all you are. And if, if, you, if you think that, you're right. But it's not entirely true. Uh, first of all, I believe all churches need to be mission churches. In other words, God has a mission for each and every one of us and the, the church as a whole. But it's, it is more than that. And uh, I wonder if you could put my PowerPoint up. That would be helpful too. Uh, my goal this morning is to talk just a little bit about what it is that we are after, what it is we're trying to accomplish as, as the people of God. And, uh, you know, can I just tell you that um, missions is, is an outgrowth. It, it is an outflow of something that God is putting inside. If you don't have it inside, you've got nothing to give out. Right? So part of what we're doing as a church when we, when we gather together is, is to receive from God. It's, it's, uh, it's all part of it. So what I'd like to do this morning, okay, you're not cooperating either. See what happens when I go away. There it is. Okay. We have these three bylines that we have on our, our sign out front that tries to describe a little bit about what we are attempting to do as a church, what we are about, what, what, our, what one of our goals or three of our goals are, enjoying his presence, experiencing his power, come on, come back there, there it is, and engaging his purpose. These are the three things that I believe that God has called us to do. I believe he's called all churches to do this, but we are, we are keying in on this. And so I just want to spend just a few minutes, I'm not going to preach long today, but I, 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 I want us to be aware of what it is that we're doing. Why do we gather together on Sunday morning? What is it all about? Well, first of all, it's about Jesus. It's about giving glory to Jesus. It's about exalting him. And so let's focus on this first thing, enjoying his presence. Enjoying his presence. Psalm chapter, Psalm 16, David puts it this way and begins in verse 5. I love this. I think he captures this perfectly. He says, Lord, you alone are my portion and cup. You make my lot secure. The boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. Surely I have a delightful inheritance. How many of you are worried about your retirement? You're concerned about your inheritance, how things are, are going to go for you? How many of you know that it's, it's God alone who makes our lot secure? I, I'm so thankful for our financial planners. We have a couple of them here this morning. Some of the best ones, I must say. I'm very thankful for those who can advise us and help us. But I'm, I'm going to tell you, God makes our lot secure. Amen. And he goes on, he says, I will praise the Lord who counsels me. Even at night my heart instructs me. I keep my eyes always on the Lord. With him at my right hand I will not be shaken. Therefore, my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body also will rest secure because you will not abandon me to the realm of the dead, nor will you let your faithful ones see decay. You, if you are a follower of Jesus, if you know the Lord, if you know God, you don't have to fear anything, not even death. You have nothing to fear because he has you in the hollow of his hand. You are secure in him and you have nothing to fear. You can rest secure. He is not going to abandon you, not even to the realm of the dead. He said, you make known, I love this, verse 11. You make known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence, with eternal pleasures at your right hand. How many of you know that everybody's looking for pleasure? I mean, it's just sort of the national pastime. 
people are looking for various kinds of pleasures. And God is amazing, right? He has constructed the world in such a way as there are so many things in this world that are pleasurable. Food is pretty good. I enjoy coffee. You know, I mean, friends, uh, wonderful things to see, to smell, to feel, to be around. Uh, there's so much for us to enjoy in this world. But I, I want you to know something, that all of these kinds of pleasures are passing away. They're passing away. They're temporary. But there is, there is one path of life that God wants you to find that will bring you eternal pleasure. Eternal pleasure. He says it this way. <clears throat> you fill me with joy in your presence and with eternal pleasures at your right hand. How many of you can understand that God wants us to cultivate a... Uh, a desire to be with him, to be with God, to enjoy his presence. So this is why we, on Sunday mornings, gather together and we just spend a little time in his presence, experiencing and enjoying his presence. Because in that place, things happen. Things happen. It, it, it's like God softens our heart. It's like he tenderizes our heart for all of the things that he wants to do. Do you enjoy his presence? Yes. Do you? Yes. I, I, I really do. I really do. And, and you know, I, I love to visit other churches when I, you know, I'm on vacation or if I'm out traveling or, or doing whatever. And, and it's, it's remarkable to me how much how much busyness goes on in many churches. They've got this going, that going, and the other thing going, and they, the one thing they don't spend much time doing is cultivating his presence. And i got to tell you, in my opinion, that's probably the most important thing you could do. How many of you understand that for all eternity we're going to be enjoying the presence of God? Amen? So that's one thing that we're attempting to do when we gather together here is enjoy his presence. But I believe that leads to the second thing, which is experiencing his power. Experiencing his power. Um, somebody wants to find worship as a place of meeting with God, a place of meeting with God where I exchange all that I am and receive from God all that I need. I want you to think about that for a minute. Worship is not just something we do. It's not just a song we sing. It's not just a, a little feeling we have. It's an actual place where we meet with God, where God comes and he is in our midst. And in that place of meeting with God, a wonderful exchange can occur. I can give God everything. I can give him all my, my hurts. I can give him all my wounds. I can, I can give him all my failures, all my sins, all my brokenness, and he'll take them. He'll take them. Where else are you going to do that? But he doesn't just take them. He gives us something back. What he gives us back is everything we need in Christ Jesus everything we need. He gives us grace and peace and healing and restoration and renewal and power and empowerment and equipping. He gives us all this back. So worship is an amazing thing and, and this is something I don't think you can do just by yourself. I mean we do spend time in prayer and we hopefully worship God in prayer and spend time with God in prayer but there's something about gathering together where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst of them. There's something that occurs when we are together and just in that moment of worship where God's Spirit begins to move in our midst. How many of you have felt that? You've experienced that. And when that happens, that's the time to just pour out to God everything that you have, everything that's inside of you. All of the bad stuff, all of the junk, pour that out. And let him 
wash that all away. Let him take that all away. And then begin to pour out good stuff. Tell him how much you love him. Tell him how much you, you appreciate him. And, and, and that's, that's what worship is all about. It's me telling God everything that he tells me to tell him. I mean, that is the essence of prayer, really. That's the essence of effectual prayer, is telling God everything he tells me to tell him. I mean, if you know, I don't even know how to pray on my own, but the Holy Spirit helps us, the Bible says, and he equips us with groanings that can hardly be uttered. And so the Holy Spirit can, can help us. So there is that, that place where we are worshiping God, experiencing God, and then we can connect to the power of God. We connect to the power of God. Friend, I don't know what you need, but I know the one who has what you need and can meet your needs. It's God himself, and he has the power. I'm thinking of, I'm thinking of the power of God to save lost souls. I'm thinking of the power of God to heal I'm thinking of the power of God to deliver from evil spirits. I'm thinking of the power of God to, to equip us, to enable us. All of this is available to us if we'll simply come, if we'll open our hearts to him, if we'll experience his power. Amen? Amen. That's part of what we're doing as well when we're together. I just so want you to experience that which you have need of. And I, I, I really love the way the psalmist says it. He said, you are my portion and my cup. And he says, you have made known to me the path of life. Friend, listen, this is the path of life. What is the path of life? God himself is the path of life. coming into his presence, experiencing God. Could there be any greater thing than experiencing God? I mean, I'm so thankful for all of the other aspects of our lives that are God-given as well. I'm thankful for my wife. I'm thankful for my children and my grandchildren, and I love spending time with them. And I'm, I'm so thankful for all of the, the, the good things that, that God has given us in this world. I'm so thankful for a good meal and you know, just uh, the, the blessings of life. The French have this expression, joy de vivre. They know how to eat. They know how to do a lot of stuff. And there's, there is just this uh, celebration of life there. And I, th I think that's cool. I think that's wonderful. Don't you? You know, I mean, you can just slop, you can just throw food together if you want to and eat it, I guess. Or you can spend a little time, you know, preparing it, cooking it, and adding the right spices and all of this, and then enjoying, enjoying it. The Bible tells us that God wants us to enjoy all things. But the greatest of all of this is God himself, who has reserved for himself alone that one thing that you and I cannot experience anyplace else. There is this God-shaped vacuum in each of us that is craving, and, and we fill it with so many things, good things, some of them, some of them not so good, this is why people, I, I'm convinced this is why people become drug addicts and other things. Because they're searching, they're looking, and, and they, they try chemicals, they try other kinds of things, and those things are, some of those are amazing, I guess, they tell me. I guess. The problem is they rob from you more than they give. But God has locked it into us. We want God 
but we don't always understand that it's God that we're wanting, and so we're looking in all these weird places and for different things. The psalmist says, but you've made known to me the path of life. Friend, have you discovered it? Have you found it? Have you found the path of life? It's, it's not sex. Sex is cool. It's great. It's wonderful. But that's not it. It's not food. It's not other kinds of things that are possible for the human being to experience. But that's not it. Ultimately, it's God himself. It's God himself. You tap into that. You experience that. It changes everything. It changes everything. And in that place, you'll encounter his power. His power to give you a new life. His power to forgive your sins. His power to transform your life. His power, his power to deliver you from darkness and from bondage, from evil. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So this is what we're doing. We're enjoying God and experiencing his power. And the last thing, very quickly, we're engaging his purpose. Ultimately, it's not just about me. I mean, I'm thankful that he loves me and cares about me and he wants to bless me and has blessed me. But how many of you know the grace of receiving is wonderful, but the grace of giving is even greater. It is better to give than to receive. Now, you can't give what you don't have. So first of all, we have to have it, right? First of all, we have to be set free. We have to be filled up. We have to be prayed up. I like that. Preach it, sister. But there is this, there is this business of the purpose of God. I love the way the Apostle Paul says, he says, by grace you've been saved through faith. It's not from yourselves. It's the gift of God, not by works so that no one can boast. So we're saved by grace through faith, not by our works. It's the gift of God. But we are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God has prepared in, in, in advance for us. See, God has a purpose. God has a purpose. This is, now we're getting down to the mission thing. God has a purpose for each of us, and he's got a purpose for our church. It doesn't just begin with the purpose. It begins with God himself. It begins with connecting with God and ex experiencing God, enjoying God experiencing his power, receiving those things that I need, allowing him to fill me and to heal me and to bless me and to anoint me and to equip me. But that's not the end of it. It's just not like I am the, you know, the dead letter office where everything comes in and nothing goes out. No. Now, he fills me up, equips me so that I can bless others. That's when it's really getting fun. That's when it really gets fun. When you start blessing others with the same blessing you yourself have been blessed by. That's what this whole thing is. That's what it means to be engaged in his purpose. God loves all of the people and all of the houses all around this church, but they don't know it yet. They don't know it yet. And many of them are hurting and, and lost and broken and trying to find the very thing you and I have discovered in the presence of God. They just need someone to tell them. They just need someone to reach out and minister to them. And this is what we're trying to do. This is what we have been engaged in, his purpose. Yes, his purpose may carry us to the Ukraine, but it may also carry us just about 100 feet that way in the hub, and we invite the neighbors to come, and they do. And many receive Christ every Wednesday that we meet like that. It happens every time, every time.
the word of God is presented, I see hearts open. I see lives changed. See, folks, this is what it's all about. This is what we're doing. Where are you at in that whole, that whole cycle? My question to you is, are you enjoying his presence? Have you learned how to do that? Have you experienced his power? Have you experienced his power in healing and in restoration and, and, in, and in equipping? Have you received spiritual gifts? Are you equipped and empowered by God? Then are you engaged in his purpose? Come on, worship team, we're going we're gonna to end with this. So I guess we are kind of a mission church. I guess it's true. But I don't think there's any other kind. I think every church is a mission church. I think we're all called by God to enjoy His presence, experience His power, and engage His purpose. Would you pray with me? Thank you, Lord, for your grace and your mercy, Lord. Thank you that you love each one of us, God. You love us just the way we are, but you love us too much to let us stay the way we are. Lord, I pray your spirit would sweep over this room right now. Friend, if you're here and your heart's not right with God and you've been kind of running from him and you know it, can I just call you to repent? Turn around. Here's a thought. Stop walking away from God and turn and walk toward him. Just turn. Do it now. How do I do it, Pastor? Well, it's as simple as a prayer. Lord, forgive me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, God. I need your help, Lord. I'm sorry I've broken your laws, Lord. I've sinned, done bad things. I'm sorry about it, God. I stop and I turn toward you now. Let his power come. Let his power come. Wash you, forgive you, cleanse you. Make you born again if you're not already. And if you are, let him wash you and purify you and cleanse you. If you're lonely and drifting, you know the Lord, but he just seems a million miles away, friend, that's a lie. He's right here, right now. And he's calling you. Just open your heart to him right now. Say, come in, Holy Spirit. Awaken my heart. Awaken my heart, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. For some of us, we just need to engage now. We just need to engage. Let's get after it. John said, let's make disciples. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Hallelujah. Let's all stand. Worship God together.
sense. I just want to speak prophetically a little. Have a sense that God is going to do something new in our midst. Not sure what exactly. But I, I have a feeling God is saying, come up a little higher. Come up a little higher. And I, I'm, I don't know about you, but I'm ready. I'm ready. So Lord, we want to go a little higher in you, God. Father, we want all that you have for us as a church, as individuals, as individual families. Lord, you're calling us to go higher, to go deeper, to experience more richness, more fullness. Thank you for all that you've done in our past. But you're not done. God, I sense that you're calling us into higher places, deeper depths, greater riches. And I thank you for it, God. Lord, I, prepare, I pray, oh God, that you would prepare our hearts. Awaken in us, God, a hunger for you. A hunger for your spirit. A hunger for your presence, God. That would tenderize our hearts. And prepare us for all that you have for us, Lord. God, I pray for our nation. And I ask you, oh God, to send an awakening. Lord, I pray for the church in our country, in America. Lord, send an awakening. Call your people. Awaken your people, oh God. Call us to a higher place. That we could be more like Jesus. That we could burn brighter. That we could have a richer experience with you, oh God. That we could be a church that is burning brightly for you in such a way as that it sets our nation on fire. Call us higher, I pray, oh God. The church is going to do it. You believe it? You ready for it? You ready? Amen. Father, we thank you. We thank you, God, for all that you've done all that you're doing in all of the earth. Lord, we pray, do it here. Do it now. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you.